Good morning. Well, we got to let it ring. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning and welcome as we gather together on this Christmas Day plus one. And I hope that you all had a great uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. And I tell you, the weather couldn't have been better, at least around here. We, uh, we've been blessed by that. And uh, great to have each and every one of you with us here today. That's right, and you too. Uh, great, uh, great to have you here. I don't know if you saw my exercise thing there earlier. You know, only only pastors get by with that usually. Is that kind of have to get up and go, whoops, <laughs> and, and, and so then I quick sat down again. So, <laughs> but Burl, you were right. It wasn't nine o'clock yet. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> folks, I hope that you've had an opportunity not just to look at the uh, Grace Glimpse this morning, but also for, uh, for the last half hour or so, it's been on your screens. And so I'm just gonna highlight a few of the things this morning before worship. First and foremost, most of those individuals on our prayer request list, and they include today, Shirley Honkin, Georgia Cayley, Megan Cayley, Reverend Maury Hagen, Carol Stroh, Lori Tingle, Mark Odlin, Betty Heyman, and Marsha Moeller, and Randy Annenson. And then our sympathies to Joel and Poyna Smith on the passing away of Joel's sister, Becky Alpostatite. So please keep them in your thoughts and in your prayers. Beginning in January, so starting next Sunday, we will be celebrating Holy Communion on the first and the second Sundays of the month, as opposed to the first and third that we've been doing here for a while. Um, if I'll share with you some of the reasons that uh, that prompted that. You know, we have individuals that work every other weekend. Uh, we have individuals that, due to family situations, uh, can only be here on alternate weekends, and sometimes uh, that makes it hard. So if we do it two in a row, we know that we're going to be able to get them and allow them to take Holy Communion at least once. So it'll be on the first and on the second, and that begins this week. Thank you to everyone who purchased poinsettias for our Christmas season. Please take your poinsettia home to enjoy. There are bags in the east entryway, um, one floor below. Uh, so uh, as you get to the door, you can, uh, you can bag them up. Uh, it's not all that cold out, so they may survive that quick run to the car, but just in case, um, there are those. So please take those with you, and we thank you for that gift that has made our sanctuary so beautiful during this Christmas season. The next Transitional Task Force meeting is Sunday, January 9th at 6.30 p.m. We wanted to highlight that. And then if you are interested in becoming a member of Grace Lutheran Church and to be a part of our family, please contact either the church office or one of the pastors. Um, we'd love to talk to you and we'd love to have you here as a part of our family. So please, uh, please keep that in mind. Um, as I said, please bring this home so that, uh, so that you can take a, a look at all the, the things that are happening, all the opportunities that we have and everything else. Once again, it's great to have you with us today and it's great to, uh, to be a part of this family as we celebrate and worship our Lord. We begin with the sharing of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let's take just a minute and, and stand up and wave and do whatever you need to do to, uh, to say welcome.
begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Please take a moment for silent reflection and for self-examination. most merciful God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue with our song of praise. Please be seated. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We continue with our worship song, and I, I just need to let you know that uh, it must be me and it must be my eyes. If you're wondering why I'm looking up there and then looking back there, that white with the yellow, I can't read it from here. And you probably can't read it from there, so, so we'll, we'll have to work on that. We'll have to go with another color on that. 
we continue with our uh, our worship song. <laughs>
that could potentially go into the hands of a bishop. So. so just mark that on your calendar. You'll see more about that in the, in the newsletter next week. Should I start with the first reading? Again? Start with the first okay. reading again, yes. Our first reading this morning is 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 18 through 20 and verse 26. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Echaniah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow, both in stature and in favor, with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 148. Let us read responsively. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all your hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you water above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created, who made them stand forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail preserve all creatures. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, not shot, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and cattle, creeping things that fly and flying birds, sovereign of the earth, all peoples, prince of all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, who is over the earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants. The children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. Our second reading is Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in a word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
excitement. <laughs> we got her? We got her. The Holy Gospel chosen for this day comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the Christ child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, so that when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay homage to him. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the child had stopped, or the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I don't really know if we have too many children here. And you don't want to be the only one coming up, do you? Because I have a really hard quiz today. <laughs> as soon as service is over, make sure you get a treat, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> As I said, these are the fun worship services when all these things happen at the same time. It's called, uh, in essence, worship is not an exact science. But it is a joy. Please bow your heads in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for another day, another opportunity that we have to give thanks to you and to worship you. Lord, we thank you for the miracle of Christmas, for the marvel of Christmas, for the opportunity to wonder, for the opportunity to be in awe. Lord, we give you thanks for this day as we gather together and we hear of another part of the nativity as we hear about the wise men who came to pay the Christ child homage. Lord, be with us this day and every day. Amen. I am jumping the gun just a little bit on Epiphany, and there's a reason for my jumping it. Um, the text today is an interesting one because we would have immediately gone from the birth of our Lord on Christmas Eve to Jesus at age 12. 
And I'm thinking, boy, how quickly time flies. And I know what Pastor Ann is going to be preaching on next week. And so I thought, you know what? If I don't at least say something about the season of Epiphany, something about the gifts of the Magi, then once again, like it does so many years in so many churches, it just zips right past us. Uh, it used to be years ago that, uh, that every church had an Epiphany worship service. Not on the Sunday closest to Epiphany, but they had it on Epiphany. And if that was a Monday night or a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night, church would have it. And I can remember as a kid that Epiphany service was full. Times have changed. But I needed to say something about these three wise guys here. One of the amazing things about this season, one of the amazing things about all of the individuals that took part in this is that so often we as people have kind of messed it up a little bit and have messed up their story. Martin Luther, in writing about the wise men, had several interesting things to say. He said, number one, he says, we don't know there were only three wise men who came. He said, there could have been 12. There could have been a half dozen. We assume that there were three of them because there were three gifts. But we don't know. It's interesting that, you know, we've got names for the three wise men. And that tradition shows that one of the three wise men is African American. Now that didn't happen until the 6th century when the continent of Africa became known. Suddenly one of the wise men changed color. We know, or we're pretty sure, that they were not there on the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born. And most of the thought process is that the earliest they were probably there was six to nine months later, and the latest uh, probably two years or more. I'll never forget, I talked about this one time at a church. And as I was talking about it at church, I said, you know, they weren't there. And in this church had this beautiful manger scene that was up on top of the altar. The wise men were about yay tall or so. And I said, you know, I said, if we were to be accurate, I said, these wise men shouldn't be here. They should be, and I named this particular town about 30 miles away. And I said, because if we put them there, if they walked with the size they were, they'll probably get here within six to nine months. And then after I got done saying that, my thought was, and, and this is what happens when you think out loud, because my thought was, are there any wise men in that town that I want to put them in? That got back to the residents of that town. And I had a little explaining to do that. I said that there were no wise men in your town. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Should not think out loud ever. Don't, don't ever do that. But there are things that we can learn about these three individuals. You know, we call them kings. We sing, we three kings of Orient are. They weren't kings. Uh, in fact, Luther went to say, one of the reasons we know they're not kings is that Herod didn't treat them like a king. One of the things that King Herod was about was pomp and circumstance. If, an, if a visiting king came, they would be given all the honors due to another king, just in the same manner even today as a, uh, as the head of a, of a country comes to the United States, you know, they are met with honor and with pomp and with circumstance and with formal dinners and things like that. Herod didn't do that. He called them in secretly because Herod needed to know something. He needed to know what they had seen. They were not kings. They may not even have been holy but they were amazing people because one of the things that they studied and studied well were the stars. 
fact, it always seemed that with the birth of royalty, with the birth of someone special, that there'd be a new arrangement of the stars in the sky. Something amazing happened in that time before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born. These earliest astrologers saw it. And they decided that they were going to follow this new emerging star to see if they could find this new king who had been born. And so they set out. They took off. They followed the star. And when they came into Herod's country, they were seen. Herod had spies all over the place. He knew anyone who came into his country. And he wanted to know more about them, and so he called them secretly, and he asked, why are you here? Scripture tells us why. We have seen this star. We have known now that something incredible has happened, and we followed the star because we think a king has been born. In fact, they asked Herod, where is this king? Herod didn't know, but he needed to find out. And so he secretly told them in pure King Herod fashion, you guys go. You guys go to Bethlehem. You find this king, and then come back and tell me, and I will go and pay him homage. We know through Scripture that's not what Herod wanted to do. We know that he was hell-bent on killing the Son of God and would do anything and everything that he had to do, including sacrificing the lives of all children of a certain age to make sure that he got them. So they went. Scripture informs us and gives us another thought that they probably weren't there on that night. And I don't know if you caught it. But Scripture says, when they came to the house where Jesus was born, or the house where Jesus was living, not the house where he was born, or the cave where he was born, but to the house where he was living. By that time, Mary and Joseph had found lodging in Bethlehem, had made a decision to stay there for a while. So they came. And if there's nothing you get out of this visit by the wise men, please get this. Although they were not Jewish, although they were foreigners, although they were not religious, when they walked into that little tiny house, whatever it looked like, they looked and they saw this baby and they believed instantly. No one had to explain anything to them. They were in that respect like the shepherds. When they came that night, they saw the baby Jesus. They knelt down at his feet and they worshipped him because they believed instantly as well. And now this group of foreigners who came guided simply by a star and found the Son of God. And they offered him gifts, gifts of gold, gifts for a king. Gold is that gift that you give a king. Frankincense or incense. And then myrrh. These gifts for a king, these gifts of praise to God, and then this gift, ultimately, for his death. I'm going to leave you with a great little thing that Luther wrote again about the wise men and about what maybe you and I should think about doing. Luther puts it like this, and I had to write this down because I love these words. Luther writes, if we Christians would join the wise men, 
we must close our eyes to all that glitters before the world and to look rather upon the foolish and the despised things to help the poor, to help your neighbor in need. Do not boast that you have built churches and masses. For God will say to you, what to me are your churches and your masses? What do I care about your altars and your bells? Do I take pleasure in stone and wood? Who told you to build churches? The house I have set before you is a spiritual temple. Think about someone writing that long ago in the time of Luther would be the one to say, you know what? Get rid of all the stuff that glitters. Get rid of all these things that separate you from what it means to follow our Lord, what it means to give Thanks and praise to God. Spiritual temples. That's what each and every one of us are. We are spiritual temples. And our task is to praise God. I hope that you have had an incredible Christmas season. I wish you a, a blessed epiphany. Together, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please bow your heads in prayer. Gracious God, on this day that you have blessed us with again, on this day shortly following an evening of absolute joy and delight as we heard the incredible songs of Christmas, as we gather together with hundreds of our fellow Christians. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for 
Christmas Eve, we give you thanks and praise for each and every opportunity that we have to worship you. Merciful God. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the things you've blessed us with. Lord, during this season after Christmas, help us to not forget the Christmas story. Help us to keep Christmas within our hearts, not just today, but each and every day. Help us to each and every day give thanks and praise to you for the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Merciful God. Heavenly Father, now in the silence of our hearts, we offer up prayers and petitions heard only by you. To you, O oh Lord, we submit these prayers. We know that you hear our prayers. Thanks and praise for that, for everything else. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated for our musical offering. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves and these gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew it us in song, the song of your salvation. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please join with me as together we pray our Lord's Prayer. Please bow. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We sing our sending song, All My Heart Again Rejoices.
now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus for whom we wait. Amen. Go in peace, rejoice in Christ the Savior. Amen. And as I'm walking down, there are a few pots of coffee downstairs, so uh, come on down and empty them, otherwise I'll have to drink all of them today. <laughs>